Although it's not super popular yet, there is a practice called veganic farming or animal free agriculture, which utilizes crop rotation, better soil management, plant diversity, also using slow release plant based carbon fertilizers, unlike the quick release nitrogen fertilizers used in conventional farming. I've left an article in the show notes below that also goes into the productivity and profitability of these veganic practices versus conventional farming practices, showing that not only is it more productive than conventional practices, it's actually over eight times more profitable than the large scale farming that we're using today. There is also aquaponics, aeroponics, and other modern ways technology is changing the way our food is produced, using less resources, less land, and having less impact on the planet as a whole. You can notice that he didn't explain how does that deal with crop dust issue. For example, how are pests being handled? So I'm going to get straight to the point. The goal with a garden is to turn it into its own thriving, living ecosystem. And you're after a pest predator balance. The pests being things like cabbage white butterflies and aphids and flea beetles. But the predators being beneficial insects such as hoverflies, parasitic wasps and one of my favourites, ladybirds. Regarding insect pests, as well as slugs, snails, and the like, I found conflicting information. Some sources say no pesticides are used in vegan organic gardening. Others say organic pesticides can be used as long as they target specific pests and don't kill beneficial insects. The first of which is just encouraging biodiversity. For example, if you have an insect problem, then you can encourage certain species of predator insects or birds, for example, to take control of the situation. If pesticides aren't used, then other animals are used as means of pest control, which would be killing with premeditation using other animals, which seems exploitative. Let's see what a vegan has to say on this something very similar. But what about rewilding and introducing natural predators to control populations? Isn't this something that vegans promote as an alternative to hunting? I think it would be useful to see how this sounds in a human context. So let's imagine a tribe of indigenous people and their population is going out of control. And this is creating huge issues for biodiversity. It's destroying habitats and it's gonna cause problems for other humans down the line. How would we feel about introducing an animal that is going to hunt them down and eat them alive? We would think this sounds utterly barbaric. If introducing a predator to control the population of humans seems utterly evil. Why would we think it's an acceptable thing to do to non-human animals? Sure, there are some non-violent and non-exploitative means of dealing with pests, but I doubt that it would be able to be done on a large scale by all farmers. Other than pests, we have an issue of killing animals in the whole process of digging and other kinds of activities. Veganic farming isn't crop deaths free. Let's assume all those would kill fewer animals than monocultural farming. The fact remains that it would still kill animals, and that is the actual problem. In Crop Death's Excuses number 4, I explain that you can't justify killing animals in the first place by virtue of killing fewer animals compared to someone else. Not to mention that this is just about food. Animals die in the production of many other things, which vegans wouldn't reduce. So what is the justification for killing even one innocent sentient animal? If there is no justification, then vegans have a problem. 